Mm. Uh, okay, uh, over to the corp side now. This pack contains quite a lot of corp cards, so we'll go through them. This one's a HB card. It's a three one agenda, which means it's crap. What do you think? Yeah, it's crap. <laughs> okay, next. I mean, it, the, the ability <laughs> is fun. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's actually talk about the ability is actually really cool, and it's the sort of ability that um, was seems like it was designed to hate on the shape of strategy. I've never actually like of just searching up all your breakers and getting them back from archives. Except that it doesn't uh, really. It's, yeah, I mean, it's just... It, it hates it by annoying the heck out of Shaper. I mean, I don't think it's good, but it's just annoying to play against. It's a sort of like deck card you in a grief deck that doesn't exist to win, it's just there to just annoy the hell out of your opponent and make them rage quit on you. Uh, I can definitely see this being played in uh, Jason Brown's deck. <laughs> I can... <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same reason people fucking play housekeeping. Like housekeeping is a bad current. It is an infuriating, but it's infuriating play against because it's annoying as hell. So are you hinting to Jason that he should play both this and housekeeping? No, go away, Jason. I mean, he does have twenty-two influence. Uh... Shout out to our resident resident um custom biotics exile player. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it is mildly annoying. It's not game winning. And it's a 3-1 agenda. And it's not game changing. Yeah. yeah. And one interesting point that uh, we talked about in our chat is that um, this seems like a card that was printed before the most wanted list was conceived when prepaid K was most dominant. R.I.P. K. Goodbye, sweet princess. <laughs> I mean, this card... No, um, what? I mean, the, the runners that this really hurts the most are those... Uh, that bring the card into the hand when they search their stack. So, hi Andy! Yeah, basically special order. And... Well... <laughs> well, you know, because Krim needed more hate, right? <laughs> yeah, in any... I mean... I don't know why you're hating on tutors. Tutors are kind of an important part of the game. I mean, to be fair, tutors have done a huge amount in uh, like making rush strategies unviable. I mean, Faust has done a lot more. But tutors haven't been amazingly good for the game. I, mean, I think how easy to use SMC was is not being good for the game. Special Order was completely fine. Special Order is fine because you need to check the ice. Yes. Bounce off it. Install. That costs you three clicks. SMC is install and then you pay two credits, which is like less than a Which is you know, just over a click of um, stuff. And you can get it at any time. You can just, you know, you can get it in the middle of a run. You can get it in the middle of the opponent's turn. To get the cape discount or you know to clot. SMC is very, very powerful uh, compared to special order. Also, special order actually costs you one, uh, one as well. So, and two clicks. Yeah. So, SMC actually gives you a discount on special order, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, special order did not need hurry. Free nope. special order. Yeah, this is the worst for special order. You tutor your one Corona. Whoops. Oops. Just got sniped. Well, it's not going to happen, because no one's going to fucking play this. Until you they mean do... no one's going to play Krim? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's true. Krim is so bad now. Alright, um, G's Mortal Baroy is a very polarizing card. Okay, Alliance. And when you spend three clicks doing the same thing, you gain a click. We need a... a I, I need rulings on this. I don't know what constitutes spending the same click. But... So, I mean, if you play three events, you get a click. I think. Even if it's three different events. Yeah, because it's on the same action. It's play an event. Sorry, play an operation. Um, so you just spent three on that. So if you proco three... Well, obviously you can't because it's a runner. Because it's, it's, it's on the corp side. If you proco three times with Steve on a borrow it out, you can get you get another click. I mean, it's basically the collective. What about doubles? Uh, celebrity gift into a hedge fund? Yeah, but that's not three clicks and the same thing. It's, I don't know. Yeah, you see, the rules get quite muddy there. Yeah, what it, about installing an asset and installing an ice? Are those the same thing? Both are in, yeah, both are installs, so that's fine. Okay. You look at, you know, you know that, like, sheet that... Um, yeah, I um, suppose it's that sheet. As long as you can, as lo if you're doing the same thing on that sheet, it's fine. Now, the, my problem with G's model Biro is, is it's probably, it's one of those assets that you just need to trash, right? Because... Um, as long as you can justify doing the click the same click three times, so advancing three times or maybe you know taking three credits, 
it just gives you an extra click, and it's for two for five. It's really nasty. But how often is that the case? Because uh, on the runner side, maybe because you have cards like Proko and Magnum Opus, but you don't really have that in, on the court side. But if you're on the court side, you can do stuff like cred, cred, cred. And so if you're playing ETF, for example, you cred, 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 and then you install, and you still get you get an extra cred. Um, I mean, eight, especially in HB ETF. There's very few turns that you'd actually like spend your turn doing anything different, different thing. So you might, might you maybe install, install, install credit. You'd be happy doing that, or credit, credit, install, credit, 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 install. That allows you to trigger Jeeves. Mm, yeah, good point. Maybe, maybe I'm just looking at it, uh, like from the perspective that you know it will that it will always have an upside, but and. Um, I mean, the way you're phrasing it, it basically sounds like a pair campaign that tr costs one more to trash. Although, it also turns on the ability to do stupid things like uh, advance of. Uh, yeah, four it, allows you to, it allows you to score a, you know, a you know, to never advance a four two. Um, it allows you to, uh, with the help of one biotic. Um, score a four two. Score a five three from. Uh, or a never advance five three. Yes. Yeah, you never advance five three. You know, it, it's good. I think yeah, that's the more that's the killer part about it. The fact that it is in some in it's a part, it's partially a fast advance tool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, as if it, it didn't already have like you know enough ways to annoy you <laughs> with the never advance shenanigans. They can just this is just amazing with never advance. Well, to be fair, I can't see this being pr being printed in any other faction. It just feels wrong. Yeah, it is a very HP card. I mean, the other funny thing is you is it now allows you to as HB to biotic triple advance. You should have another click, uh, which you need to get credit or something. Or install your Jackson after the ABT. Oh yeah, that is dumb. <laughs> that is really dumb. Yep. So it is a decent card. I don't think it's game breaking. Uh, I mean, it will be annoying. The five of is very annoying. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is that you you actually need to uh, hog up an entire uh remote for it so yes. you probably don't have the ice you can't yeah you it's your scoring mo remote being, being taken up or you have to leave it naked no, no no i think you leave it naked i think if the runner is willing to spend five to trash it before you res it you're coming out ahead yes that's true on uh, the other hand there's a lot of asset hit nowadays so mm -hmm. it's not that well positioned right now maybe what i'm really scared is if someone finds a way to break a horizontal deck with this because um, this fits in so well with horizontal decks because typically horizontal decks you want to either draw, 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 or install, install, install. Yeah, so this is really, really dumb at what you call it, uh, multiple turtle bags. Exactly. Yeah. Thank Thankfully, it's in the faction with the least horizontal capabilities because they have no horizontal ID yet. So uh, I don't know. It is an alliance card, so if they somehow find a way to put in six HB other HB cards, it is zero influence. Problem is, there are not really that many good horizontal. Uh, team spawn, team spawn. Alright, oh, yeah, you have team spawn. And then, like, three of the advanced concept hoppers just to. And my what? Advanced concept. No, no, ho sorry, not hopper. Advanced assembly lines, that's one inch. Ah, now we are talking. Oh dear. Am I now just... we are talking. Is it one inch? I think so. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a. Let me check. Let me have a quick look. Advance. It, it's a, actually a pretty good card. I I'd be very surprised they printed that one in. It should be two. If uh -huh. memory serves me right, it should be two. It is two. Ah, oh, boo. There we go. Yep. Boo. So that's influence you can't spend on turtle bags or Mumbet City Hall or all your horizontal shenanigans. So it's not that bad yet. Yet. They'll print an HB card that breaks this. <laughs> Probably the HB ID that's coming in this pack. I mean, in this cycle. Hmm? We'll never know. Uh, Ramen Rai. Another alliance card. Uh, this one has a substantially less interesting effect. So, when you draw a card, you may spend a click to swap another card in archives of the same type. I can't really see why you do this very often. Uh, it allows you to swap... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it allows you to swap stuff like an operation you don't need for a better one. So, for example, if you draw a hedge fund but you're on ten, you can just swap it for a restructure. Or if you draw an ice you don't need, you can just swap it. Or you, or, you know, you can swap it for something that's been parasited away. Or if you, you know, if you 
get a baddie and you already have one on the board, you can swap it for a Caprice that has been bin. I don't think it's awful. I mean, it's okay. Ice is horrible because you're exposing the ice, you're revealing both ice, so you're giving Corp a, the runner a lot of information. Yeah. The Some... operations are very marginal. Restructure for hedge fund, really? <laughs> well, sometimes Boothy is not. Sometimes you get. Bo sometimes just Boothy, you just want the toll booth on remote and you just stick yeah, to the get one. I mean, okay, actually, hedge fund for restructure is a bad idea because you're losing a click to do this. <laughs> exactly. Um, if there's an operation you want to swap in, it's uh, Motion Notion. Yeah, okay. You are playing that sort of deck. Assets, maybe snare, recurring snares into your hand makes your hand very unpalatable to run. I could see that. Mm -hmm. But generally, losing the click is quite a huge cost. Not to mention that it's only 3 to trash. So, all in all, I'm not very happy about it. Yeah, okay. You've come, you've convinced me he's okay and not amazing. <laughs> I don't think he's amazing, they're not good. Yeah, it's not like su super good, good. And I don't see anyone. Uh, using the alliance effect. Oh yeah, it was see play an IG by the way. <laughs> oh, you trash my museum? I'll have it back, please. Right now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. When I said alliance, I meant splashing it out of faction with six other Jindaki cards. I didn't mean tutor it anytime, anywhere with Mumbad City. Tutor it with big, fat, ugly, uh, you know, a Mumbad City grid. A city hall. Uh... It's, it's an IG card. <sighs> Fuck you, IG. I mean, to be fair, IG is really strapped for deck space. They only have 54 cards. They can't afford to include this. Only 54? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, care pronouncing this for me? Uh, Upa Yoga? I don't know. Okay. Maybe. It has a picture of a hand, a palm, uh, whatever that means. Yeah. And it has two subroutines for a code gate. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And that's about all that's nice about it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. I mean, it's basically going to if you just if this is your only uh sci sci ice, it basically says how the one it pays for. Uh, I ran the calculations on it, and it's only pay two. So um, you right, realistically it's... will only run this in Mise division. Yeah. And as a corp, you're almost always betting zero. So yeah. the runner bet zero anyway because it doesn't actually end the run. Yep. So the corp gains one credit. Then it triggers it can trigger itself. So the second subroutine will fire the first subroutine which gains the corp another credit. So the corp gains two. That's it. Yeah, and you paid three for this bullshit. <laughs> Even shadow is better. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Shadow actually gives the opponent a tag. Yeah, I think the biggest problem is that all the other side eyes is crap, really. Um, what other subroutine do you want to resolve? And the yeah. run on Snowflake, that's pretty much the best you're gonna get. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the main problem. Side eyes doesn't hurt enough, and uh, yeah, I mean, it has a good ratio 3 to res, 4 to break, which means that this will become pretty taxing, uh, whichever way you look at it. But at the end of the day, Eh. Uh, eh. It really is quite eh. Eh. Another eh card. I, I don't know what kind of deck would want Aryabata tech, but I mean it's a 2 credit swing which is decent, but why not play uh, primary transmission dish instead? I don't know. I mean, it's basically a sort of, this is a very win more card, and that's a bit of a problem, because it, it's great if you're ahead and you're triggering all these traces, because it means that you're going to get more money, you're going to get lots of money, and the runner's going to lose money. But if you're not triggering these traces in the first place, it's a bit shit. If, if the runner's just breaking them, it's a bit shit. So obviously this is screaming to be played with uh, Surveillance Sweep, because <laughs> then you get to bid after, and you have a higher chance of making the trace fail. It also um, plays very well with Gutenberg because Gutenberg is very, very annoying to break. Oh so yeah! This turns Gutenberg into a very, very into a into a pop-up window with a tag attached to it. And Unfortunately, at two to res and three to trash, we've seen better assets. Yeah, I mean, it's not broken. It'll probably see some play, but it's not like the most ridiculous asset ever. I mean, I kind of wish they just printed more of these assets because. 
it's actually quite an interesting design space, and it actually pushes you to play traces. Uh, and it, it's it, and it's good because it gives you an incentive to play traces without actually pushing you to um, without you know actually like pushing the the old you know oh kill uh, you know kill traces and um, you know tag and destroy the resource traces. It actually pushes traces a different way. So from a design standpoint and from a gameplay standpoint, it's actually really cool. It just Probably just a bit too weak. I see what you're saying there. Yeah, I actually kind of agree with you. Um, this basically, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, firing off tracers that, those weaker tracers to make them slightly better. I I kind of like that idea. Mm, but again, yeah, I uh, even then this is very hard to justify because it just gets into trash. Yeah. Now, some more interesting alliance cards. These aren't assets, so you. Well, okay. <laughs> I don't think you pr you probably won't see them in IG. We'll start with Salem's Hospitality, which is an a card that sabotages the runner's hand. This could be interesting. So, um, yeah. So the Salem's Hospitality reads: Name a card. The runner reveals his or her grip and trashes all copies of the name card from that grip. So this is actually really good against Anarch. Um. Especially Max. Basically, anyone packing I've had was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's really good because any anarch that reveals stuff that they're adding to their hand, you can play Sailor's House Power and you can snipe that card from their hand. Uh, it, it's it's one of the few cards that will re enable Whale and Kill. Yep. Unfortunately, it's yellow and not green. Um, I mean, it's a very NBN y effect that of the, target, uh, the targeted. Um, That's true. Yep, I don't see right. any other faction getting this card. But it's very, it is it, it, very much probably going to see much, much more play in uh, Wayland than in uh, NBN, I think. That's true. Well, I mean, it'll probably see some play in, in, in a sort of killy uh, butcher shop deck. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it'll probably see play in Wayland, because if you're playing Wayland right now and you're trying to go tag and bag, you're already running at least far, four, maybe even five uh, NBN cards. You're running three Jacksons, you're running at least one C source, maybe a mid C source, maybe two C sources. And you can probably just bury it in for a toll booth or something. So they can, th then suddenly, Sin Hospitality becomes a zero influence card that you can use um, to help make your Scorches better and help make sure your Scorches hit. And it's probably, I mean, it might be the card that just turns Wayland well around. Keyword being might. Yeah, that's the. Product of being a very interesting design space that is uh, yellow alliance cards because Jackson being ubiquitous as he is means that not just Wayland but any faction can probably import these yellow alliance cards if they so wish. Of course, Jinteki and HB have not much use for it, they are too busy fighting over clone suffrage rights. But for Wayland, this is potentially something that can do a lot of damage. The fun yeah. thing is, it doesn't just snipe I've had versus, as we've mentioned. If you can snipe at least two of the same card from the hand, if you somehow know that they are holding two of the same card in their hand, you bring the hand size down to three, you can kill them with a single C Scorched. It's also important to note that it, because it's two cost, it actually makes a Scorch a lot. It actually reduces the amount of money you need to kill them. Uh, because uh, it reduces the number of scorches. Yeah, because it reduces the amount of Yeah, because yep. scorch costs three, this costs two. So if you kill if you if you're killing, you know, two cars from hand with Satan's hospitality, you know, um it just it you know, that one cred will often be a huge difference because the runner a lot of runners will say, Okay, I'm safe because I am, you know, six creds ahead and then Wayland you know, plays in hospitality and oh shit, you you know, they you, you the Wayland only needs to be so, okay, the runner would think they're safe because the Wayland's only six credits ahead, but same hard probably means that the Wayland can actually kill you from five uh, five credits ahead. And one thing, fun thing to know as well, if you somehow for some reason don't need to use it for the kill, um, you can chain Salem's hospitality onto itself, meaning that you can see the hand and maybe trash a card, but then you know what's in the hand. So when you play Salem's a second time, you can specifically target stuff in the hand. Yeah. I think Salem's is probably best with uh, some sort with mid seasons because it allows you to because you can mid seasons, then you can Salem's and then you know that you can safety scorch. Yep. Um, 
So you can you can even just use this uh, if if you have if you have mid season uh, a mid season uh, lock on your opponent. You can even just use this um, before you just trigger your scorches just to make sure they have no other worses. Yeah, so. that's true. It's probably safer that way because say you're up against an Anarch that's holding five cards. If you are playing Sea Scorch, you cannot Salem Sea Double Scorch. You don't have enough clicks for that. Yeah, I think it's better with the mid season deck. So yeah, welcome. But in that case, would you not just play Traffic Accidents instead? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. Wayland decks are kind of tight on deck space as well. They need their ice, they need their economy. Mm. So it is, the more I think about it, it's actually quite a tough sell. Because when you're up against an Anarch with 5 cards, do you play Salem's or do you go for C-Double Scorch? It's well, the thing about uh, C-Double Scorch um, versus... Uh, Traffic versus traffic, mid-season traffic, is that mid-season traffic is inherently risky, just because, you know, you might uh, if you know that they probably have I've had voices in hand, um, because of how much they've been drawing. It's the fact that you could you know completely blow your chances and give them a tempo boost by discarding the I've had voices really uh, with uh, with damage is really bad. But this allows you to you know avoid that. That's true. Um. Yeah, so it m you might be right. It might just go back to running one of each sea source and mid seasons without any traffic. So yeah, you use that us to find it, uh, to search it out. Yeah, so that costs you three plus six nine influence, and you need to find one more non alliance NBN card. Probably booth. Probably to booth. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. Not bad. Uh, so that's pretty much Salem's hospitality, a card that will see more playing Wayland than NBN. What about this Whalen asset executive search firm? And let's be search up Elizabeth Mills. Yay. Ooh, uh, okay. Meh. Uh, I mean, so it would be, I think it would be good if there were any good sysops and executives or characters to fetch up in Whalen that weren't incredibly fringe. That's uh, a problem, right? Because which, the two uh, defensive Upgrades that you really want to fetch are not Sysops, Executives, or Characters, which is Ash and Caprice. I thought Ash was a Sysop. Uh, I don't think so. I highly doubt so. It's... Uh, I forgot what's the subtype. I don't think it's a Sysop. Ash... Uh, 2x... whatever. Uh, he is a bio? Oh wow, he is yeah, just bio, a right, yeah. Oh wow, okay. Um, so that's the biggest problem. If you're playing in Wayland, you want to search your one-off copy of a defensive upgrade, and it's not going to be Ash or Caprice. I mean, it actually it allows you to search up Jackson, which is nice. The problem is, in Wayland, there are two better cards that do this for you. There is Executive Bootcamp, and there's Tech Startup. Fair. So why would you play this, which costs a click? Uh, and you need to install it from HQ. So this is yeah another big problem with this is that it costs you two clicks. You need one click to add it to HQ and one click to install your Jackson. I mean it's the same with bootcamp, but and bootcamp costs a credit. But I suppose bootcamp doesn't cost a click. And has a bet uh, has a side effect. Sure. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there are just too many problems with this card. Um, first off, most I mean. Yeah, you can uh because executive bootcamp and tech trader are exist already. This card competes with them directly. So basically, half of the cards are just better off served with executive bootcamp because um, half of the cards are assets, executive suit swaps and characters. Yeah. A few of them there are upgrades. Well, they're not that many, and they are all pretty bad. The worst thing about the subtypes is that they all tend to be unique. So. Um, one of the best things about Search Firm is that unlike Bootcamp and Tech Trader, you can use this multiple times, kind of like Mumbat City Grid uh, Hall, which is why it's so broken. This not so much. There's not any need to tutor multiples of these. So, yeah, that's quite, quite a big problem. So realistically, I don't really see this being played in faction or out of faction. Maybe it's good to tutor your one-off executive, those that cost, uh, that give the runner two point agenda points when they trash it. Yeah. But again, why not just play bootcamp instead or uh, tech startup, which allows you to install it uh, at the end of the runner's turn. So I don't, I'm, I'm not sold by this at all. Fair. 
Right, another Wayland card. This one's pretty interesting. The stock exchange gives you one credit every time you res or play an out of action card. Apparently this includes neutral cards as well, so hedge fund triggers it, restructure triggers it, everyone can be building a better world. Really? Oh, so this actually triggers on neutrals? Uh, the official FAQ isn't out, unofficial FAQ isn't out yet, but I believe the w w uh, word has been going around that that is the case. It actually makes it a lot better. I mean, it's actually, I, th I mean, I think if it didn't trigger off neutrals, it'll be mediocre, maybe even bad. And it'll be one of those dumb whaling cards that's better out of faction in. But the amount of neutral cards whaling plays is actually quite high. So <laughs> I, I actually wouldn't, like, I wouldn't. I said this is actually quite decent if it uh, triggered off non Wayland card. Uh, I mean, obviously it doesn't play well with Wayland's current strategy of go of going tall with like one or two big servers. Uh, but if you're say playing Gagarin, I think this is actually quite decent. So, 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 sorry, Wayland had a strategy. Their only uh, strategy is to lose, isn't it? Uh, fuck you. <laughs> Come on, make um, Manchester Blue Sun work again. We know you can. Uh, it lost. It, I mean, Dumble Fortress has too much money for it. <laughs> mm, yeah, I I don't know. Gagarin already has more than enough um money assets. The thing with Gagarin is, the problem is not having too much money. The problem is having no way to convert that money into a win. So, well, this doesn't help at all. And I don't know what sort of uh, Wayland deck would uh need this to be honest. No, I don't know. I mean... I uh, don't get me wrong, it's a pretty strong effect. Maybe yeah. a building a better world deck with... Uh, I don't know, subliminal messaging, because that seems to be a pretty good uh, combo. That's a pretty good combo, so it just gets you two... So subliminal gives you two credits every turn, more yeah. if you have multiple any new stock exchanges. But then, that's just begging the question, why the hell is the one letting your... Are you... Uh, SEs live? <laughs> yep, that. And but then uh, it, again, it's three cost. It's a three cost of trash asset. It's quite. It's quite. The 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 ratio is nice. Yeah, the ratio is okay. Um, um, yeah. Again, basically. Oh, no drip economy. That yeah. is that isn't that is very very conditional. Yeah. Basically, Whaler needs ways to win, not ways to make money. They have more than enough of that. Yeah, they just need like better eyes to be. <laughs> I think someone, uh, I think it was the Winning Agenda Boys, who uh, said that uh, Wayland literally has around eight barriers that all do nothing except end the run. Yeah, they basically do the same thing. <laughs> Which is really sad. They could definitely use a barrier that doesn't just end the run. And I'm not talking about Bailiff. <laughs> Which is a complete joke, by the way. Alright. Maybe this could be a Wayland card. It's a mini assassin. It's Cobra. Um, the good thing over assassin is that it isn't reliant on the trace. It it just straight up trashes one program and does two net damage, and it can be splashed in all factions for no influence. It's pretty good. The bad thing about this it is it's broken by any sing any sentry breaker and their mom. Like and parasite, I guess. Breaks for two. Whoa, mimic breaks for two. Mon it's actually very good against mongoose because it, you know, if you fo you force to use a mongoose. Wait, what? No, it doesn't. Yeah, because well, if you don't use it on the cobra, you trash the mongoose, and then they don't have any mongooses left to break the sentry behind it. I mean, it's good against mongoose, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say cost one to break. For four res eyes as good against mongoose, but I see what you what you're trying to get. At there. Yeah. I mean, if you it allows you to if you stack sentries, it is good against mongoose. Yeah, you can say that for any sentry. Okay, fine. Uh, but yeah, I I yeah, you're right. You can't trace through it like you can with assassin. Although tracing through assassin is probably a very bad idea. Yeah, can. paying nine to get past that is just not fun. Well, if you are it... a crim with one link with a sports hopper, it becomes five, which is slightly better. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the fact that you can't trace through Cobra is kind of a big deal. And as a painful fix check, it's always very nice. So if you're running Faust, you have to ditch two cards uh, when you face check this. You don't have to, you can ditch three instead. <laughs> three? You could just like take the two net. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could. But sorry, bad joke. 
Oh, it's a good joke. It's a good joke. It triggers your iPad worse. Woo. Oh. Mm, no. uh, <laughs> but yeah, and yeah, I guess the game needed a bit more painful eyes. And Cobra does that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if you play many factions, to be honest. I think it's just too small and just too easily broken. It's very much a face check ice, which is. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a fa it's, it's very much a face check uh, hate ice, but there's already enough ice that disincentivizes you from running, e.g. Architect, that I don't think this is actually a huge deal. I don't know. I think this is really good um, in rush decks. I mean, I mean, I know rush decks are not a thing now, but if they ever do become a thing, uh, Cobra is actually really good because you don't have to play Grim and lose and get the bad part. I honestly would just rather run Roto Turret. <laughs> True, true, in a rush deck, you just want to end the run and stop them from getting in. This doesn't actually end the run. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll give you that. So you need to. So you need something behind it in a rush deck. I mean, Roto. I, the, Roto is just much nicer because it just ends the run. Yeah. Okay. I, I I see where you're coming from. That I have to agree with you. Right now, um, most factions don't have problems with mid range ice like this. These like, HB has Eli and Architect. Uh, Jinteki has Komainu, and um, Waylon, well, Waylon sucks, and NBN has Archangel, so they don't need more eyes at this rest cost that are painful to face check, so I can see it being not very good. <clears throat> but his art is amazing though, I love it. Yeah, it's creepy. Hey, it makes a nice background. Alright, this has the potential to break the game, maybe? Uh, so, before I saw the influence cost, I thought, why am I not playing four card re three card resist in every way in the deck? Then I saw the influence cost and it says, oh. Yep. I mean, it's basically a card that um, allows you to search up any card you want, which is really nice, but the influence cost is incredibly prohibitive. It is. You're not gonna play three copies of it. No. I'm sure most of won't even play one. Yeah, I guess you won't. It really just smooths out your consistency. Yeah. Um, being, like, I don't know, being able to tutor your entire Squatch Dove combo is pretty nice. Mm, yeah, but it puts you four credits behind. And the fact that it costs you three influence, and Wayland already very, very heavy in influence, uh, like very tight in influence, if it's ex importing the whole like Sea Scourge package, I don't know. Not a big fan, to be honest. Yeah, a lot of factions are very influence hungry now. I guess the least influence hungry faction is probably, uh, probably between yeah, HB and Jinteki, I guess. Would they need this? No, no, NBN. It, it like. I think NBN is probably very influenced life, but I don't think NBN can afford to pay four. No, I, yeah, that and NBN would much rather play more biotics or more scorches. Yeah, because it's not just seeing the first one; it's that they want to see it and they want to see it again and again and again yeah. to, not, to get the scorches or biotics or whatever. So yeah, I th and Wayland is too star for influence because they're so bad right now. So it has to be either HB or Jinteki. I'm trying to think of a good use of it. I suppose in IG you could tutor all three shocks and make life in instant hell. That's about it. I mean, uh, if you're playing it in, say, uh, HB, it allows you to save one influence on Caprice at the cost of, like, four credits when you need the Caprice. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather have double Caprice. Having dub double Caprice in those games where you draw both of them is so nice. It might just also be better. It might also be okay in the next dice deck. Well, you can just literally search up all your next, like all three next bronzes. And yeah, then... I was thinking of that too. That might be good. It's um, very expensive, but it, and it kind of defeats the point of running next dice, because the point of next dice is they're cheap and cheerful, and now they're not cheap and cheerful. They cost a lot of money from look like because product, look like product line is expensive. Yeah, the four cost does come into play. That's true. Um, it could see use in the motion deck. Uh, what to get all your motions? Triple motion is. Uh, awful, to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, I'm also struggling to think of ways in which you want to use this. Mm. Yeah, it, it's not coming to me. 
Alright. Lost cards in the pack? <sighs> why? Why 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 do we need more of these? Because we need more helpful wizard, right? Did they even playtest this, really? No. I mean, surely they must have foresaw this IG abomination coming and this IG abomination loves Wombat Virtual Tour. Look, anything like most decks love Wombat Virtual Tour. If you have deck space, you definitely want to run this card. Like you run it in any age for fuck for goodness sake. Right. Um, because you can slam it into your into R and D and just make it just so much more punishing to run through. I think this basically just forces every single one. Um, a wizard, yes. Or if you want to play anything else, it must have some sort of trashing ability. Like you must have an imp, or you must have scrubber, or you must have lots of bad pub or something to that effect. Yeah. Five to trash is no joke. Yeah, I mean, it does nothing in the core side, but it, you know, even then, it can be a massively good, it can be an amazing bluff. Because you can install it and pretend it's a never advanced thing, the runner runs into it, has to trash it, and now you have a massive scoring window. Yep. Because the runner just spent money, you know, like 10 credits getting your room out, and 5 credits trashing this. It's horrible. I mean, yep. it basically means, it basically reads play wizard. And the seven or more assets is that that's not a cost. Like seriously. Most decks run seven more assets. The only yeah. decks that don't are fucking Boyland. And maybe New Angela Soul. But yeah, every deck runs three Jackson. It's not yeah, that hard deck to run. Three Jacksons, you need to run four more. Uh, in HB that's you know, easily three uh, Donuses, uh, uh and three Eves. Um in Jinteki, Palana's probably difficult, uh, because Palana is very operation based. But you can easily say, uh, but in IG, uh, IG, this is amazing. This is uh, this is absolutely three X IG. And even RP, it's like um, Sandu and yeah, it, it, it all Sundu, the, yeah, um, the house yeah, the health clinic. You're, you're on seven. Um, and even in some Waylands, you can get this, but uh, obviously, it, Wayland's deck space is far more tight, and you don't really have room for this. Yeah. No, it, this is basically all. This is a reverse account that you have to do nothing to trigger. And the most oppressive part about this is it's an upgrade. Don't you really wish it was an asset? Oh yeah. Being an upgrade means that it can protect those stupid political assets. Yeah, and the and the really dumb thing is you can uh, you can uh, stick um, this in a remote with Caprice and Ash and bluffing his agenda. And if they run out of money by trashing this, they can't trash your Caprice and Ash. <laughs> They're almost oh <laughs> yeah. You have a Caprice and Ash in that remote. You can obviously trace them so that you know they don't. They won't have enough money to actually try. Yeah, it, it is a very painful card, and I, I I am not looking forward to playing against it. I'm not either. I mean, the upside is as the runner, you have a bit of an out against it. If you don't have enough money to trash it, you can ignore it. But that's hardly an upside because yeah, you have to just open the scoring window because you don't have that money to trash it. <laughs> yeah, basically, if you are not having, a, if you don't have a lot of money, you're in a bad place, and um, uh, you have to trash this a lot later because it's probably going into an important server like R and D. Yeah, I mean, if you thought product placement is annoying, this is even more annoying. Oh, least, product like, placement is the piece of your worries. Yeah, like even product, at least product placement costs you two to trash, and you this actually have the option to not trash it. And yeah, no, like yeah, if you don't care about how much money they're running games, you're getting in for so cheap. So the court gains because the gains are cheap. Yeah, okay, just let them gain two every time. You yeah, have this is just oppressive. This is uh, basically the corpse account siphon. <laughs> it's uh, sad. Yeah. And, and and we are not even talking about the synergy with everything that's IG, the IG trash costs, the hostile infrastructures. This is just a nightmare. I mean, to be fair, it's probably you're probably never gonna actually have the money to trash this damn thing against IG. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you do, you bet you'll be bankrupt after that. Oh yeah, if you do, it's a massive blowout, and you are so screwed. And you can easily just trip over one of these in centrals. Oh, right, yeah. Because it's not an ambush, surprisingly. Oh wait, no, it must be installed. My bad, okay. No, 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 but the thing is, the moment IG draws one of these, they just yeah, stick it. just install it, yeah. Yeah, and you know what it is, you know it's gonna wreck you, and there's no way you can afford to run that central without you know, running archived first to, and taking all the nasty shit they have and then then running a central and you still have to pay five. It's horrible in IG. 
I was thinking maybe our regionals would be better since uh, we get more packs past democracy and dogma. I guess I was wrong. Uh, I mean, if we do a gentleman's agreement to not do it, but there's always going to be some ass hat, some ass hat try hard like Theo who plays IG. Oh, okay. You be prepared to get flame in the comments. Oh yeah. <laughs> As you always do. Well, so on that sad, sad note, that's all we have for Southset Island. What do you think of the entire pack to go? Um. There are a couple of cool cards. Uh, the rest of the cards just make me want to shoot myself. I don't know. I think most of the pack is just... Meh. I, I mean, I'll look through everything now. I don't think there's any of these that I'm really excited to play test. I mean, you seem excited about Cobra, but then I convince you that Roto is better. <laughs> yeah, basically that. And it's quite a vanilla card, it's not something you build around anyway. So, I mean, Salem is probably the uh, the one of the, the one card that excites me as a Whalen player. And, Same, uh, yep. The, uh, the yellow, the, um, Jeeves is okay, and the yellow, um, what should we call it, the, God, I keep forgetting its name, the yellow one, the, uh, the other yellow one, the, the trace one, the, uh, the I, I, but I, tech. I think that's a really, that's a really cool card from a design space point of view, I just don't think it's tier one. That's why I, I can't really see what deck would fit this in now, mostly because Surveillance Suite is just not there yet. yet. Uh, and uh, Hopper is uh, Hopper is really nice. Hopper is, oh yes, 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 Hopper, definitely. Uh, the one card that is actually game changing. This is probably going to see players like, uh, see, like, find its way onto the list of must buys for newbies just because of Hopper, because Hopper does so much um, against so many people. Yeah, but and nothing else. Yeah, I see nothing else. And Salsa Slums. Salsa Slums isn't bad. It's it, but it, 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 it's it's IG hate, and I think right now people will just pack it because fuck IG. Yeah, hopefully so many people pack it that we won't see IG take the regionals. But yeah, but then people stop packing it, and then they, it comes back. You remember what happened at NEH last year? Well, that's depressing to know. At least NEH is fun to play against. I don't know. The horizontal NEH can get quite okay. impressive. Old NEH was fun to play against. Yeah, I guess. Like the one where you actually sometimes they sometimes would actually install stuff behind ice, and you would play a game about bluffing with ice and stuff. That was fun. Horizontal NEH is dreadful. Well, yeah, twenty four seven NEH is dreadful as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You fight fire with fire, I guess. Play one dreadful deck against another. Uh, see which one comes out on top so that's all we have and thank you for watching our nice little review sad as it is very happy shiny you know review of uh, Salsa Island pack 5 please save us please save our network you already know pack 6 isn't saving us come on pack 5 yeah I mean pack 6 will give us merger which everyone needs to pass that funds yes no no. Okay, we'll talk about it on the last review. But for now, thanks for watching. Happy night running. Goodbye. Bye.